what's going on. I hear myself. Welcome to Tomorrow. I'm your host, Joshua Topolsky. With me, as always, is the uh, lovely and delightful and uh, very friendly Ryan Houlihan. Hello, Josh. Hi, Ryan. How are you? Welcome to 2010? 2009? 2009? 2009. Um, I, this is going to be a gadget show, I guess. It's going to be a gadget <laughs> show where I'm going to talk about things that are they're not relevant. I mean, just, just I just want to say this. Gadgets don't fucking matter right now. Okay, there's a lot of bad shit going on in the world. There's a lot of Trump, you got Russia, shootings in churches. There's all bad people everywhere and they're doing bad things and and your new phone does not fucking matter. Okay? The iPhone 10 versus the uh, Pixel 2 XL not significant in any way shape or form. Just so you I want to preface this by saying what we're going to talk about is so largely in, just incredibly inconsequential. And yet, you know what? I can't spend all day being sad. And yet that bug... I, I could be angry some of, for some of the day as well. <laughs> that bug where iOS 11 makes it A space question mark. Mm. One of the worst things happening to me right now. <laughs> it's insane. What is it? How, is it? how does this bug occur? People are like, I want to send my thoughts and prayers to the families. It's like you have an a Apple space bug, a Mario question, question mark. <laughs> Anyhow, all right. So, so, let me, so let me just talk about this show a little bit. Um, we have talked about doing a show where I use a Palm Pre for a week. Mm-hmm. I have a Palm Pre 3 here, which oh, I'm charging right now. being. Slides open. Look at that. Get a so little, beautiful. Get a little of that sliding action there. Can you feel that? There's a little mirror on the back. Wow. Okay. Here's uh, the Palm Pixie. Do you remember this uh, one? A little baby. Take a, take a look. at Baby's first oh, Palm. I'm going to have to try to get that back in. Uh, a, little, a little something right there. <laughs> Here's some messages. I have messages from Laura... Uh, and uh, and like uh, uh, our friend, my friend Michael Shane. Is oh, go old. through and read them. <laughs> That's the show. <laughs> look at this. Does this look familiar, guys? Uh, I can't a do screen it. the size of, post- of a post-it. It's so stamp. fucking tiny. It's insane. It's like a Game Boy. Anyhow, so and I had the Palm Pre three, and I for, I was gonna bring the iPhone. I bought an iPhone ten uh, after you know my rant about how much I hated the notch and how bad I thought Apple was at design. I was like, well, I mean, I was like, could I get one? And then I sort of. Like when I discovered I could walk into a store and buy one, I sort of had to do it. iPhone 10, not the tenth iPhone. Also, it's a edge to edge display, not really edge to edge. Well, it's edge it's to edge. Weird notch. All the corners are there. It's just is the notch in the middle. Yeah. Um. Anyhow, so so the idea for the show is that I would use a uh, Palm Pre mm-hmm. for a week. It's not possible. To not do. possible. I mean, it's 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 this phone is like beyond. It's nothing works. Not not nothing except the concepts. The concepts work. <laughs> like the interface, the interface is All still great. great. But like the, the servers the, though. But like it just was not a non-starter. I was like, I there's no way I can do a week. I mean, what it would be is a week of everybody who I know being mad at me and me failing at mm. business and being miserable. So I didn't do it, but I did spend some time playing, playing around and trying to see what would work and what what didn't. Yeah. Very little works. No. You can use the browser, but the browser is completely fucked up. Mm-hmm. It asks for, like, certificates for everything. For everything that I tried to go to, it was like, do you trust this? Do you trust this? <laughs> I'm like, yes, I trust it. It was, like, glitching out. I mean, it's it's amazing to see. I mean, when did the Palm Pre 3 come out? I just got a notification on it. Um, the Pre 3 was, I want to say, 2012? It's got a notification. Let's see. Um, and I want to say, uh, I just want to say, as you know, with this show, it's a call-in show. I'm going to give you the number now, which I have conveniently forgotten. Hold on. So pro. I'm so professional. Uh, 202-688-1697. Um, towards the middle uh, of the show, we'll talk We'll talk to you guys about your – I don't know what the fuck we'll talk about. But at any rate, so so there's a lot going on in technology right now, and none of it's very good if you ask me. Um, and, you know, I thought it would just be fun to, I mean, go back a little bit and look at something like the pre um, – which was, you know, my probably one of my favorite devices ever created, 
um, and was also an unmitigated disaster. When you were using it at the time, though, were you like, I enjoy this? Or were you like, this is a novelty, and now I have to get to back to a real phone? It never really got there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, the pre was, like, had so many of the raw materials to be amazing. Yeah. Like, it had so many things right so ahead of the curve, and yet the f- the total package was never good enough. It was like there was always something that it was. Ju- they were just about to fix that was going to make it great. I talk about this constantly, constantly. About and the pre? I've, no, and I brought it up on the show several times that I. it's the same thing with the sidekick, that I owned every sidekick because it was always going to be a really good idea. Yeah. But it never quite, even like this, the flippy thing, even it's like the pre sliding keyboard. It's like, it's good, yeah. but it's not the promise that it was in my mind. Well, it turns out that uh, keyboards are not that good. No, it turns I mean, out it turns out Steve was right. It turns out that, you know, look at this. You know, it seems like a good idea, right? Mm-hmm. But okay, I will say this: I enjoy typing on this more than I enjoy typing on e- any BlackBerry. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think the keyboard's actually better in a lot of ways. The worst thing that, looking back on it, was those Blackberries with both not, uh, le- two letters on each key. And I remember at the time being like, what a great idea. This works great. You mean like where the it pearl. had mo- modifiers? Yeah, it oh, was this real. Has, no, it wasn't even has, modifiers. It was like A, or it would be like Q, W, E, R, T, Y, and it would just kind of guess what you yeah. were going to write. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's kind of good. But anyway, let's explain the concept right. yeah, of this yeah, phone. We should what talk, the idea of what the about, phone was. Let me was. talk about, if you for people who don't know, Yeah. and most people probably don't. I mean, I'm sure diehard Josh fans are like, yeah, the pre. It's all he's been talking about for like eight <laughs> years. Um, the pre was a... So I'm a, like a, an old school Palm fan. I had my first smartphone was a Trio 650. Um, I like loved that phone. Mm-hmm. I had a, I had a, a Turbo Graphics emulator on it. I had it was like my whole. It was the first device, and I've talked about this before, but it was the first thing where I've ever where I was like, holy shit, you can have like a computer in your pocket, and I yeah. can like do everything on this computer in my pocket. And so I was like a real Palm stand. Like I was like really into their shit, mm-hmm. and they had. They had this big announcement. I believe it was at CES in 2009. It was like Palm is this is it. They're We're hail, back, baby. they're hail mary, and 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 a lot of people like we wrote at Engadget. Me and 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 Ryan uh, and and Peter, the other other editors, wrote this open letter to Palm. Like I, I had a little bit you know of involvement with it. I think we ended up having three bylines on it or something. But like we we um, wrote this open letter that was like. Here's what we want you to do to fix your products because everybody loved Palm. Anyhow, so they're like, okay, we heard you. We're going to do something amazing. And they launched this phone uh, in 2009. And people were like, or 2008 maybe? I don't remember exactly. It might have been – I don't remember. I do remember that it, my, for my first appearance on um, Late Night with Jimmy Fallon, I took on the pre – and we did like two segments. It was two thousand nine. It. it was announced. Yeah, I, we did like two for, segments on it. Yeah. I think it was in March. I took it on before it was released because it was released in like the summer or something, mm-hmm. which is insane. We spent like I think we spent like a total like of twelve to fifteen minutes of TV time talking about the palm, <laughs> which is fucking hilarious to think about now. Um, but uh, so the palm, the, so the 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 pre ran a piece of software called WebOS, and WebOS Ooh. Chef's Kiss WebOS Perfect. was. The, so the the kind of basis of the idea for WebOS was that instead of running the, – the kind of foundational thing was instead of running apps, it would run web apps. Mm-hmm. That you would build your apps in essentially in HTML5 and it would like – you could put them into packages. This was a very ahead of its time concept, very ultimately correct for a lot of things. And a lot of the backbone of apps that you use are actually HTML apps. And, mm-hmm. and, and Google has done huge amounts of work to like create like a more app-like experience within the browser, which is now like very good. But in 2009, it was not very good. <laughs> and, and Apple, by the way, had the same idea. Apple was like... Web apps. Yeah, web apps was the, how they were going to do their app stores. And we all web apps. And that was also a fucking disaster. They eventually caved and started doing real apps for this. But by then, mm-hmm. it was like way late in the game. But so the, what was really notable about this, what was really good about the pre is, and I'll just show you. I'm going to take this out for a second. It'll probably die immediately. But like it had essentially, I'm going to try to do this. It had uh, this card system, right? Oh, and so every cards. So every app was like loaded into a card it used gestures. You could swipe. Okay, I'm not. Didn't quite get it there. You could swipe up to get your. You know, pop something up in here. I don't know what what I'm opening. It's broken. Oh, it's the. It's, it's just like it's it's essentially what it's a iOS voice, it's a is voice now. call app. Yeah, it's exactly what iOS is now. And then you would you could you know so you could move through your apps and these are all live, right? So mm-hmm. it's a really cool concept. I mean, in 2009. Ooh, it's talking. It is talking, isn't it? What hold, do you have to say, Paul? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait. Wow, this is crazy. Hold on a second. This is like voice a voice calling app. Hold on a second. Let's see if we can call. 
Uh, this is like call mom and dad. Mm. Mm -mm. Call no mom and dad. Calling. Mom dad. Home. One. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's like now everybody's calling my parents. No. Um. So like so so. It, in the original version, it had this idea that you would like open your apps and cards, you'd flip through the f flip into them, you'd go, they'd be live, so they you could have all you these could apps like see what was happening. I mean, it's essentially what Android does now with its um, cards, and it's what, I what iOS does. And in fact, the new the, like if you look at the at the OS at uh, iOS 11 and the and the iPhone 10. It's very pre-like. Oh, incredibly. Very I remember -like. wanting it to be, because the app switcher at the time on iOS was the you double tap, it, the whole thing would go up, and then there would just be icons, and you could yeah. click to switch. Yeah. They've, but, had a, they've had a bunch of different versions of the switcher. Oh, so they, bad. They've had the cards oh. for a while, but the cards have never felt like actually a, like alive. Mm -hmm. And I have noticed on the new, on the 10, like they do seem to be, maybe it's just because the phone's fast enough now, but they yeah. do seem to be a bit faster. I think Android does this the best. I mean, the 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 in, like refresh time or like to come out of a hibernation on Android is much faster in my opinion, but yeah. that's right. either here nor there. We can get into it. But anyhow, so 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 the pre was this, it had these amazing, it had all of these different things that were really amazing. It had this thing called Synergy, oh, where it was like- Synergy's still a good idea. You put your Skype account in, you put your Gchat account in, you put your whatever, Facebook. and it merges them all together. Facebook, and like you could have like merged messages. It would yeah. merge all the contacts, so you could have like- one contact and would show you. Now, this is commonplace. Everybody does this now to some degree. Mm -hmm. I mean, Android certainly doesn't. I, does iOS do it? No, they, not at all. Not really, no. Nope. They just do like iOS contacts. Or just whatever. like terrible notifications yeah, and iOS right. non contacts. Right, exactly. Um, the notifications were really good. It had actionable oh, notifications. Like, and they was, popped up from the bottom. I just want to be clear. It was so ahead of its time. Like, when a notification would pop up in version one, a notification so would pop good. up. It would like reduce the size of your screen a little bit. It was like very non Subtle. non obtrusive. Or inobtrusive, or whatever the fucking word is, and then you could like take action on it. Like there were, you could do things within the notification. You could clear it. You could reply. You, you could, could you could go to the. You app. could play. You could play your music in the oh, notification. It was, it was, it was oh. very, very advanced. And it was all gesture based. It still looks really good. Yeah, but it, anyhow, it, look, it was it was ahead of its time. But like the hardware wasn't good. The mm -hmm. software was sluggish there was and, no and apps. it wasn't developed. Nobody made apps for it. I remember that it would sync with iTunes, and I remember thinking, like, oh, yeah. well, I could get it. But the iTunes was a hack. It was a hack, <laughs> that, that, which Apple killed. They would, like, I'm, like, so excited about it. Apple Apple released a statement. They were like, we will defend ourselves. And okay. Bob was like, we okay. have the weapons to attack. Here's how old it is. <laughs> okay. They were like, you can sync your pre- with iTunes, you can get download your songs off of your iTunes. Your pre or your rocker. <laughs> you know, up until not that long ago, I feel like I, I tried the Pixie or one of these like a year or two ago, and like Spotify was still working on it. Spotify fucking dead on these, could not get them to work at all. But the fact that Spotify was on them but is, at all is actually really impressive. Astonishing. Anyhow, so so Palm was a was a disaster, but Matias Duarte is the guy who Matias Duarte, who is who is now like the v, a VP of design at Google, who's responsible for all of like the modern Android design. Yeah, none's unsurprisingly. Um, he's the guy who sort of spearheaded the 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 OS, and um, anyhow, it it was a tragic product. It, yeah. They gave it, you know, they flew oh, what could have been. They flew too close to the sun, yeah. uh, you know, and their wings melted. Well, you kind of pushed them. You they, kept pushing them towards actually, the like, sun. They like <laughs> what happened is like they tried to fly to the sun, but they like jumped off the edge of the building and then just fell to the ground and died on the pavement. But it they was like what a good jump. Their wings didn't even get to melt. <laughs> what a good time of day to jump. Yeah. Everything else was set up, but the no jump wings. Looked, the jump looked incredible. They were like <laughs> looked like they were going to take off towards the sun. We were like, oh. Anyhow, so so the idea was like I'd get one of these out and use it for a week. It was just, just like not a non starter. Like I have a kid and I have a business and like. Jeopardizing my kid and business, like if I need to, like something's happening, it's an emergency. Yeah. Like I don't want to be like, or if there's an amazing photo opportunity, I mean, I should just say the cameras on these are, you know, very bad. Let's I was gonna picture. take out my old touchpad because they made an iPod, I, iPad that was the touchpad. Oh, they pad. made. I have a touchpad. I was gonna take it yeah. out, and I said to my fiance, I was like, I um. I'm gonna. I uh, can. Do you know where the touchpad is? And he said, "No. Um, remember, we hacked it and installed Android on it, and that was such a damning statement." And yeah. then I said, "Do you know where it is anyway? I'll put WebOS on it." And he said, "You gave it to a child." And I went, "Oh, this is great stuff. This is good stuff." Here's what you get. Here's what I'm seeing. It. Oh no. In case you're wondering, these beautiful photos. These are great photos. Uh, <laughs> here's some pictures in the photo roll. That's. Uh, Really beautiful picture of you talking. Uh, you pinch, can see our monitor. Pinch to zoom works great. You know, just uh, like just like who's that expect. handsome fellow? I don't know. It's pixelated over here. Listen, here's you can call a, into the show talking. if you'd like, and just tell us about your favorite old phone or what you thought about the pre. Camera's um, not that bad, actually. 
<laughs> the number is 202 688 1697. My new wallpaper. Right oh. there. Can we get that? Just Ryan. His eyes closed. You look, like, you look like you're belting, like you've got an amazing melody that you're just. It's a real crunchy photo. It's, I'll say well, that. It, it, it focused on the microphone instead of your face, it looks like. All right, let's go to Nicholas from San Francisco. Nicholas from San Francisco, you're on, and we're talking about really nerdy shit. What's up, my man? Nothing much. Uh, hello. Oh. I just wanted, I bought a palm tree my first year of school in like 2013 mm-hmm. because I was like, ah, there's one on shopgoodwill.com for $30. I'll bid on this dumb <laughs> thing. Yeah. And I expected to be able to go into a sprint and like activate it. I went to two different sprint stores and they basically laughed me away, would not activate this phone for me. They were like, we'll uh, give you another so phone had... for free, sir. Like, we're begging you, please <laughs> don't make us do this. <laughs> Um, what, um, so what happened? So they yeah, just, they so couldn't just, activate like, it. Yeah, they just wouldn't. I'm sure they could. Like there was, I don't, I didn't think there was any reason why they couldn't because I figured that like the three G bands were still up at in 2013. Yeah, so, like I feel like they should have been able to do it. They just wouldn't. They refused to do it. They're like, so we're not going to put one. They, they also said no. They're I like, know you haven't removed the WiMAX connection. Yeah, they're like, they're like, <laughs> they're like, um, look, you, you're going to put like. Uh, literally hundreds of people in jeopardy of having to do tax support on this. <laughs> like, like you know, you'd call and you'd be like, "Yeah, I'm not getting a signal," and it's like they got to go, they got to raise it to what is the tier? It's like tier three, supervisor seven. or whatever it is. And there's a guy on the phone. It's like, what kind of phone? It's like, oh, a pre. Okay, well, fuck you. Of They're course, like, your sir, pre sir, we'll 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 buy the string if you want to connect these cams. But we'd rather. <laughs> He's like, I'm sending you my old iPhone right now. So wait, so what happened? What did you do with it? Nothing. I just like used it. I like wrote a review for my like a journalism class, and then now it just sits in a desk somewhere. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. That's, that's very the sad. world's the sexiest paperweight. I, I found these. I have like uh-huh. I have boxes of old gadgets in my office at home, and I was like, I know I have a pre in here somewhere, and it was like old... such a treasure hunt. And I I have an, I have the original Sprint pre. I have I think somewhere I have the pre two. Which was like a weird abortion of a phone. Like they were like, yeah, maybe kind of. And then like they, oh, and they, they, they yeah. sold to HP. This is actually an HP phone. I mean, yeah. this last iteration is. Yeah. I mean, it actually is the best of the pre's that they made. It's like yeah. pretty solidly made, but it's still, you know. Well, by the comparison. minute that HP bought it, I was like, oh, I don't know what's gonna happen here. Everyone's like, oh, well, oh they've, they've got, got financial backers. But yeah. I'm like, but those backers are HP. Well, people don't fucking remember it, but Jimmy Iovine, before his dance with Apple. <laughs> He was at the Palm launch for HP, the launch of the touchpad and the pre three. And he was like, "This is uh, these guys. Know what, they know how to do sound. They they got the they have the right idea." Like he literally was up there, like I've been trying to find a company that'll work with me, and I finally found him. Like you don't fucking talk about that in the documentary. You don't hear about that in the Apple doc, the Apple documentary about Jimmy Iovine. You know he's like he's like I've you know I'm always been a creator and this and that, and then I found Apple. It's like okay, but remember when you were working with HP on their fucking laptops? Yeah, and, the pre- and they were like we put a special chip in yeah, there yeah, so you yeah. can really he's hear like, born finally, this way. It's 2011, by yeah. the way. Yeah, he's like <laughs> you hear the sound was, on was this. That isn't the same. Was that the same one that was the Veer? Was like the tiny? It was basically the same as the pre. It was just small for no reason. Uh, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, it was like a pixie. It was like the pixie. Yeah, except pre. It split up. Yes, the Veer was so yeah. tiny. And I remember, I remember talking to John Rubenstein. Why would you make that product? So you know, the other thing we should say is that, <laughs> that, that is that Palm. Palm hired John Rubenstein, who was a was a product guy from Apple. He was like the Phil Schiller in the era of the iPod, mm-hmm. and he worked on the iPod, and I think he maybe also worked on the original iPhone. And he was became like the Steve Jobs of Palm. He was like the guy, you know, because anybody who left Apple, like they could just automatically be like, a, you know, you put them in some smaller company, it's like, yeah, the guys are oh. Steve Jobs. I, John's I'm, actually, writing, I'm writing the uh, the book about it as it happens. John's actually a very smart guy, and I'm not trying to diss him at all, but like, yeah. I, I find him to be really charming and interesting, but like, he loved these small phones, like when they brought out the Pixie, I'm like, and he's a big, he's big, yeah. he's like me, he's like six two or something. I mean, I'm six four, but he was like pretty tall. And I'm like, why the fuck are you making these tiny phones? And he's like, I, I love these, I love this phone. What are you talking about? This is great. He also like, yeah, I mean, They're anyhow, like little Zoolander phone. I mean, it's fucking crazy. Like my daughter Zelda saw this. I mean, just can we just get a visual? I know, like, just I want to put it in perspective here. This is a phone that was released for adults. They actually it's had a really the good, size of your thumb. They had a really good ad. It is. I mean, it's almost the screen is. Yeah, 
Oh, it's crazy. They had a really good ad for this phone, though. I don't know if you remember. Wait, the, the original the pre-ads? No, no, because the Pixie. The, pre- no, 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 the, okay. pre-ads, the original pre-ads were very bad, and we should talk about that. Very those. bad. And we should let the caller go, unless there's yeah. anything else about your pre that we should know. No, nah, that was it. All right, Thanks well, so that's much. a great Thanks. anecdote, <laughs> great Thank memory. You, Thank you very much for that. Um, the, uh, the pre had these crazy ads really with like a bad. Tilda Swinton... Kind of like a poor she man's. Was like, I'm a genderless computer. Yeah, program. like a poor man. <laughs> Tilda Swinton was like the star of the ads, and they were yeah. like, they were like, um, she was mostly collarbones. Yeah, here they yeah are. there she is. There's old collarbones, McGee. Remember, remember, um, uh, Tarsim, the director. <laughs> Actually, did he direct these? I don't know. Let's look. This is cool. All right, so okay, what so you're we're, seeing... we're seeing a, a very pale woman with no eyebrows, hair, talking about like philosophical concepts. And then, you know, and then they're showing all the features of the schedule. Phone. I mean, there's no way to describe this. You just need to go on YouTube and search for Palm Pre ad weird lady and you'll find it. I actually don't think there's that. Can we see that ad? Sorry, can I just hear the audio from the beginning of that ad? I want to hear what she's saying. Can we get that going? I was talking with my friend about reincarnation. How come you can't remember your past lives was her ultimate question. Past lives. Before this, I couldn't even keep track of all the ones that I'm living. Right. She's got a lot more issues than a phone is going to solve. <laughs> this is a fucking cool ad, actually. I've decided this is a this is a crazy. Can ad. we book her for the outline? Can we get, no, what's she doing now? I don't know, but like, but I will say that's a crazy phone ad to run. Yeah, it is. Like, Especially when Apple's at the time was running like, you know, people dancing or someone be like, the yeah. iPhone, and what it's was got the, apps. What was the iPhone? What was the iPhone ad? What's the first iPhone ad you can remember? Uh, the first iPhone ad that I can remember, I don't... The first one I remember is the the, oh. ho- the phone where everybody's answering the phone. They're like, yeah. hello? And then it's like, it's here. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how much they ran that. But I it was also like all... remember, this is so weird, I remember the hand, the hand model that was holding the iPhone. Because it's so I... weird. There's a lot of controversy about the hand. Because it was a huge it hand. Like, I think it had been photoshopped. Yeah, it yeah, was weird. Yeah, there was a lot of hand controversy. <laughs> Anyhow, um, but the but the Pixie ad yeah. had a song. I want to say the song was called Sleepyhead. By, oh, yeah. By, Great song. Who is the band? Uh, Sleepyhead. A head. Passion Pit. Passion, Passion Pit. Pit. Can we get? Can we find the Palm oh, Pixie ad? God, I'm in college Because I remember this being. I was like, this is a fucking cool ad, and they did a really good job with this. And I don't know if uh, apparently John's saying they can't play stuff on the fly right now, which I, John, our engineer, which I, I highly recommend. I consider that to be a Passion failing Pit of his, on. a personal failing of John, and um, just get the experience. Okay, he says he literally says they fucked up. Is everything okay in there, John? We're gonna turn around <laughs> and it's gonna be like this is gonna be blood splattered all over the walls and. Yeah, seriously. Um, Speaking of philosophy, we have Renee from Chile who wants to ask us if it's even possible yes. to live without a smartphone. Let's hear it. Hello? Hey, um, yeah, just wondering, like, our, our modern world, our, our lives have been so deeply shaped by, you know, the smartphones we're used to use. So it's it seems like you, you had some really big trouble yeah. you know, using that old phone because it's just impossible. Yeah. Well, I think it's, I think, I think it, what I've discovered, and I've thought a lot about this because I have these bouts where I go, you know, obviously I'm hugely nerdy, but I also have found lately, and I think it's partially because of the news and partially because of just fatigue, like technology fatigue, that I think I start thinking, like, what would it be like if I'd lived differently? Like, if I didn't look at Twitter. I mean, if what I if wasn't, you think different? No, if I, if I didn't, if I stopped looking at Twitter and Facebook, yeah. if I, you know, used email only for business-related mm-hmm. things, if I, you know was very, you know, if I was like, you know, it basically lived without a smartphone. And I think it can be done. But I think at this point, you are making a philosophical and life decision that isn't about, like, yeah, this device right. like, or that device. Like the thing is that, you know, we have, like, our lives are just shaped around smartphones right now. Like, it's, it's, it's just like that. No, it's true. I mean, the way people, the way people interact... But even deep at deeper levels, like I've been thinking a lot about the way we perceive ourselves and the and the, you know, like the the way we look now. I mm-hmm. mean, in some ways, is very much like how will I be seen on social media? Like, what will I look like? There's so much like second guessing and so much totally. um, pr- like prep for being photo. Like, think about this. My, yeah. I, of my daughter, I have photos of her 
from the time that she, literally from the moment she was born till yesterday that are, I mean, I have thousands and thousands and thousands of photos of her and her entire life has been documented up until this point. My wife has thousands and thousands of photos. We weren't, as kids, I, that did not happen. No. There's like a book of photos somewhere and there's like a couple hundred photos of me probably in existence that people took when I was a kid. And, and just even something like that changes the way you interact. Like I find myself looking at my phone when I'm hanging out with my daughter and I'm like, why am I doing this? Or instead of doing something with her, I'm like, let me take a picture of this because I can because it's sitting there. Yeah, right. and, it's, and it's totally like a like a so, 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 Sorry, my English is not very good, but like it's it's a society thing. Yeah, like, no, it's it's if, very it's if it, our, like if we raised a kid that didn't have any access to phones, like he would totally be able to live a normal life. Like, but but we sort of yeah like this un, un, unparalleled access and this sort of unrestrained access to technology. And yeah. no, I mean, in that, we, and, we and I think, slaves to technology, really. I mean, I think that's true in a lot of ways. I, I also think that, that, you know, and this is something I've been thinking a ton about. I mean, we have really given um, so much power to engineers to decide how technology should be, how it should be yeah, part right. of our, uh, part of our lives. And I think and what is, the limits are. Yeah. And, and I think this is really like something that we have to start considering on. A, I mean, you look at the Russia news stuff and the fake news and all this shit. That's like a small little part of it. But like when you think about the idea that Google and Facebook and Twitter and all these other companies are going like, what's the way that we can get you to use our product as much as possible without stopping? They're not thinking like, what can we do for you? I mean, there may be a byproduct of it. Yeah, it's like, yeah. what can we do for you? They don't think about the consequences of what they do. Yeah. Like, because if, if everything you, you just, if you just focus on like, Getting as much traction and as much and as much user time as possible, you forget about the consequences. You forget exactly. that on the other end, there are people who are affected it, by what you do. It's like so, the idea. Like, it's like uh, sorry the, if I if I get a bit off topic, but like here in Chile, we're about to have presidential elections, and we're seeing a lot of the same stuff that we saw on the U.S. presidential election, like uh, candidates using bots to sort of spread, you know. Uh, um, Misinformation, yeah. for a propaganda, or yeah. Know, and, and... Hello, hello. Oh, do we cut out there? Yeah, yeah. Oh, here's oh. there. Okay. Hello. Uh, we just. I think we lost Renee. No, he's on. No, we just lost him. We lost him. Yeah. Oh, okay. But well, I will say this. I totally see that, and I wonder, like, yeah, the, that like news has reshaped. Um, conversations and like how we get how we understand the world and all of that yeah. but i will also say i think it also reshapes how you think yes because if i go to a concert and i see people on their phones i will say to friends like someone is videotaping this much better than our like cheap sheet seats there's right. no you're never going to look at this again or fireworks like you're never right. going to look at a photo no, of no, fireworks. No, no. this is something i always think like, but when it's you're, compulsive when you just when can't stop when you're in a when you're in a moment this idea of and i've i feel like i've talked about this before but you know watching somebody at a at a show being at the show, holding mm -hmm. their phone up, shooting it the whole time, and then so they can go home and or go to Facebook and put it on Facebook and be like, I was at the show, and then like they're like having a memory of a thing that they actually were never even a part of. Yeah. They're like, remember this? It's like, no, you don't remember you it because you were busy thinking about what your video of the, of the concert looked like while you were at the actual show. I just went to Disneyland and thought the entire time like I, I just found myself thinking like, oh, that's an Instagram. That's an Instagram. And right. I posted like 90 yeah. and I could just think like back, like uh, it was a blur. I wish I had, I wish my phone was taken away from me yeah. and that I couldn't, because what am I going to photograph at Disneyland that hasn't right. been photographed no, before? No, I mean, I mean, the truth is, um, uh, we, we, I mean, it's, a, it's up to us at this point. I mean, it really is up to humanity. Yeah. And I've, I've tried to, I've actually tried to, to cut back in some ways and i and you know look i'll tell you something twitter like there was a day where i was like okay i can't handle it anymore i uninstalled it from my phone and then i finally caved like you know six hours later i was like okay i can't handle not having twitter yeah. but i put i used to have twitter on my home screen like as close as i could to to my thumb to my email to whatever yeah and i put it in a folder and i have to say just having it in a folder without its presence in front of me like all the time at you. i find that i use it less now like i mm. look at it less and i'm less aware of it and I think the same is true of Facebook. I've had it in a folder. I barely open it. And I think that, like, we really need to start figuring out for for ourselves, like, what is the vital thing that is you need and is is useful to you and is meaningful to you? And what is the thing that is actually a fucking distraction? So you're saying what we need really is Twitter moments. <laughs> no, I'm not saying <laughs> I'm that. I'm just kidding. And, okay, well, uh, back I'm to I'm offended the... that you would suggest that. 
Back uh, to the Palm Prix. We have Evan Rogers um, on the line. Okay, and he Evan. wants to talk about Synergy. And- okay, Evan, let's talk about Synergy. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, yeah. So you have talked about Synergy before. You guys have both, I think on the last one or maybe one before that, talked about unified messaging on Windows Phone. Um, I kind of wanted to pick your brain, Josh, because um, – you know, you you were a little older than I was in 2001 when the FCC forced AOL Instant Messenger to, you know, be be accessible through at least one other client. Mm-hmm. And so clearly, some you know, at some point in our history, we believed in, uh, you know, regulating communication platforms and specifically as they kind of like, uh, you know, in terms of end user products, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How, how was, how was our, how was technology different at that time? And do you think that like our just culture generally would be, would benefit from regulation of like iMessage and Facebook messenger and all these companies that are deliberately trying to lock you in into a messaging and communications platform? Well, I think, I think this sort of speaks to, um, well, some of what we were talking about just a second ago, but like, you know, the goal for these companies is lock in, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, the one thing, so I've been thinking, I actually talked about this. I was going to bring it and I forgot like an idiot, but I was going to bring, I bought this iPhone 10 and I was going to, I was like, maybe going to open it on the show and talk about it. But yeah. one of the things like, as I've been going through my like reasons why I would switch to the iPhone, right? I'm like, I really like, I have a Pixel 2 XL. I think it's a fucking excellent phone. And honestly, I... I think it's gotten a lot of shit for its screen that is completely unwarranted. It's like antenna gate over all over again. <laughs> um, but it's a very good phone. I'm having trouble. I have a Note 8. I've been playing with it. I'm like, I don't want to switch to that. Mm-hmm. The So when I go through the things about like, I mean, I literally started making a pros and cons list because I'm a huge loser. <laughs> um, but like the, iMessage is the one at the top of the list where it's like, well, yeah. getting back on iMessage would be nice because my mom uses it. My dad I uses it. My brother SMS. uses it. My sister-in-law uses it. Obviously, Laura uses it. And it's like, but here's the thing. That's what it's for. Like they hijacked your phone number so they could lock you into it. It's like BBM. You know, it's like now everybody's in this like club. And if you're not in the club, like you, there's all these things you can't do, but also like you can I can switch my phone whenever I want or and, and there's and like so I think about like you know the goal of these companies is to lock you in. I mean Evan to talk about regulation, I mean the government does is is now we're starting to hear about you see these hearings that have been happening with with Twitter and Facebook and Google like the government is starting to see how technology can impact people's lives directly and in ways that is harmful, but they're so fucking behind the curve in terms yeah. of their understanding of the technology that like I don't think we're anywhere close to them being able to say you know, this should be regulated. Also, with Apple and with iMessage, they don't have the market share. I mean, to, in order to regulate something like that, you basically have to prove that there's a monopoly, right? You have to say, well, there's no other option. And, and Apple would right. to say, look, there's a million other ways you can message people. We put WhatsApp on our platform. We put GroupMe on our platform. There's a thousand yeah. different messaging platforms. And, like, you can use any one of them. We just – this is ours, right? Ours, yeah. So it would only be a situation where if they had 90% of the market that it became an, a, a real issue – but it is an issue in 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 ways that are that is that are felt by users, you know. I mean, I mean, Apple does all sorts of right, lock in like this. But I, I, I would sorry, wait. So this. Yeah, so it's not a it's not a monopoly thing. You're saying so, like we would have to have like a different category. We're not in we're not in monopoly territory. Now you want to talk about a fucking monopoly? You know, I just read a great um, sort of data story about growth on the internet, uh, post 2014 growth in the internet, and. You know, I think the stat now is something like 60% of all internet traffic is Facebook and Google related. It's like on a Facebook or Google related service, meaning mm-hmm. like WhatsApp, uh, YouTube, Google search, whatever, you know, AMP, Facebook, the app. That to me is monopoly. That to me, that's a duopoly right now. And and I actually think like for the future of the internet and the future of new businesses and the future of how we get information and, and learn about things and communicate with one another, it is, I think we have to get into a pretty serious fucking conversation in this country and in other countries about how we regulate how much of the internet they're allowed to have. Like Ben Thompson actually wrote, sorry, I know, ben, I, ben Thompson actually wrote, a, uh, 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 I don't know if you get Stratechery, the newsletter, but uh, it's a good newsletter, everybody should subscribe to it. But um, he wrote a piece about Facebook buying TBH, which is this 
teen app for like doing polls. Um, and, you know, they're basically like skirting regulation by paying like the minimum amount they need to pay for it so they don't get scrutinized by the government. Mm-hmm. But Facebook is actively is actively working on a monopoly and they're, they are not hiding it. They're not being sneaky about it. It's like pretty out in the open. And I think that's a really fucking huge problem for the future of humanity and the future, not just for America, but there are places, there are countries where Facebook has taken such a massive footprint of their traffic that it's frankly, it's fucking dangerous because Facebook should not be responsible for all of of the world's information. Like they do not know how to handle it. Well, here's, here's what I would say is that you said earlier uh, in the show, you were talking about how like gadgets don't matter now. Yeah. And I, I, I agree and I don't agree. I think that like this particular like gadgets and gizmos of plenty don't really matter. But what does matter is that they're it's so much more tied to our real lives. So yeah. when you look at something like Amazon, Amazon, it, it, it's a monopoly in some ways, but it's not so much that it's a monopoly. It's that it's lock in is so strong right. and they have products of every kind that they can re- slightly reduce the price just enough. And they have yeah. Whole Foods. And listen, I love I Amazon. Jet, Jet.com. I love it. I've been using Jet for a couple of things. Pretty good. I mean, they could they could legitimately compete. I think Walmart bought them. Yeah. Right. Okay. I, so that's true. But so I guess what I was saying about the gadgets don't matter thing is yeah. I'm saying like if you have a Note Eight or a Pixel or an iPhone, it's like it doesn't. They all do the same thing. They're all really good. They all will get you where you want to go. I mean, I've used all of the phones. But okay? wherever you're going is to Amazon Web Services. But that's that, that's the so so, so <laughs> and, and this is something I've talked about for a while and like I've been thinking about for a while, which is like it's not about the gadgets. It's not yeah. about like what screen it has or how fast it is or whatever that stuff is like it matters but only in a way that's like you know if you're aware of the performance of something like it might be a problem for you right if it's if it seems slow to you then that's an issue but like the reality is most people are like my phone is fine unless they have an uh, iphone and they upgraded to ios 11 in which case (laughs) everybody i've talked to is like my phone is a complete fucking like dumpster fire but i found no problems on my on my iphone 7 by the way just for the record but um the thing to think about is gadgets do matter insofar as they are the portals through which we live our digital lives. Yeah. And how they how we use them is the thing that's interesting and how these things affect us. That's what's interesting. So, like, when I say gadgets don't matter, what I mean is I don't mean, like, it's not yeah. – they're not important. But, like, a review of one phone versus another phone to me could Animoji not be – An emoji are not breaking yeah, this. Animo- well, an emoji is a great example of a thing that's, like – I mean, if that's Apple's like version of the future, <laughs> it it's like an infantilized shit piece of a future that like I'm not interested in. And yeah. I don't want to. I'm not trying to like ruin people's fun. <laughs> like, have all the fun you want, but like, you're a fucking baby if you're like if you're spending your time doing karaoke. They're just trying to get some of that sweet, sweet snap. Yeah, they just want. Yeah, no, but I mean, like, I see people on Twitter like doing this yeah. like an emoji karaoke, and it's like that's fine. You can do that, but like, you're doing what like 14 year olds do. <laughs> well, thank you for calling. Yes, in, Evan. Evan if, if any parting thoughts. No, no, no. Okay. Other than the fact that I'm coming from inside the building that is shutting down AOL Instant Messenger, but see you guys later. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye. I assume he's at the Engadget office is what, mm. what, we're, what he's yeah. trying to tell us. Okay, that's a great. That certainly led to a rant. <laughs> I think that's a good thing. Um, so, so, yeah, so I actually think this is the, the interesting part. Like, as, as I think about technology now, mm-hmm. um, there's that bigger picture stuff that's really interesting to me. And, and there is actually, I think... Our behavior, and for a while, I started thinking a lot about this, like around the Google Glass and the Apple Watch era of, which was like a few years ago, I guess like three, maybe two, three years ago, three years ago, let's call it. And like everybody was like, we're so distracted by our devices, like we're going to make things that will make you less distracted, you know, by putting them directly on your eyeball. And like neither one of them actually did it. I mean, Google Glass ended up being a non-starter; like they really never took the project to where they said they were going to take it to, and. And the watch is completely bullshit to me. I mean, I, everybody I know who has a watch is like, oh, I turned off all the notifications. I literally only used it to get specific notifications. Yeah. Like, does, did my mom text me? Or right. Whatever. Yeah. Like, I know people who use email. it as like a fitness band, and that's yeah. great. Like, if you want to track your fitness. But, like, but what the truth is about it is like, we need to change. We have not, technology's moved so quickly, and there have been so many like minute, engineer decisions made about technology that we're still playing catch up. Most people are still playing catch up, right? Which is why 
the fake news thing is a thing and why Facebook is caught off guard by it. I mean, there's part of it you can go like, oh, they don't care or, oh, this is good for their business. But there's, yeah. there's a big part of it that's like Facebook cares but didn't understand it. Yeah. You know? Like, I think there are parts or, of it. I, I think they did understand some of it, but they didn't understand how to fix it. And it was like, yeah. it's, you know, if you don't have a fix, don't bring it up. It's a right. problem. Well, part of the part of the problem with these with these like free speech platforms like Facebook and Twitter is like they're like – they come from these like you know these technologists who have these like interesting like libertarian views that are like mm-hmm. everybody every man for himself we're going to just give you a platform and you go do it and it's like oh but actually there's a bunch of dominant rich voices here that drown out the other voices and if you don't have an engineering solve to fix that you end up with fucking Richard Spencer with a blue check mark next to his name yeah. because you don't fucking care if somebody's like esp- like spouting not literally Nazi ideology to uh, minorities, you know, it's like yeah. you don't get it, you don't understand it, you can't see it, and you can't fix it, right? Yeah. Obviously, those are huge problems, but also like, I don't. I think with Twitter, it's actually malicious. I think with Twitter, they they know that their business rests on Nazis they're and monsters. trolls. I actually believe firmly, and I would love to fucking talk to Jack about this. I believe firmly that if you were to remove the trolls and the Nazis and the bots from Twitter, their business would crater. I mean, I really think that it would. It would it would be a very different looking business. I saw a report that was like 230 Facebook accounts are fakes or duplicates, and I was like, it's way more than that on Twitter. How many? 230 million. Oh, 30 million. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Twitter. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, Twitter might as well be 60 percent. But bots. the thing is, it's that people are funding it too by like paying to have bots follow them. No, no, no. It's it's the whole thing is a, is a, is a disgusting mess. I mean, look, the internet is super fucked up right now. Yeah. And actually, somebody wrote a great piece um, that I just read called "It's called There's Something Wrong with the Internet." And it is largely about baby videos, about videos, which we wrote about these Peppa, these like knockoff Peppa Pig videos. Yeah. Actually, can somebody find that link for me so I can say who the writer is? Um, Eric shared it in one of our Slack, so you can find it. But anyhow. In the meantime, here's my Peppa Pig. <laughs> uh, but Peppa Pig, like, you know, we wrote, Laura wrote about this um, because we actually noticed Zelda was like watching her, uh, her, her, um, his name is uh, James... Bridal, something is wrong on the internet. It's on Medium, um, and if he wants to republish it on a real website, James, we're ready. We're here for you. Um, hey, hey, don't come for the claps system. But uh, yeah, it's got. It honestly doesn't have as many claps as it should. It's got twelve thousand claps. Not enough claps. I don't fucking get this. Um, anyhow, but the point is, like, there's we we have. Like, we spent a lot of time on the wrong things on the internet. That's how I feel. Like, we spent yeah. a lot of time on, like, figuring out how you could get, like, super likes or whatever. Or, like, fucking promote your post up or get likes and subs. And, like, people liking things is the wrong motivation. Mm-hmm. Like, like, what do you do with that? But it's also bullshit. Like, we need it, a gold standard we made, for We likes. made this thing into a popularity contest, and, and it's a game. And if you, it's a game, you can, it can be gamed. Yeah. And that's what's happened. Like, people who are with money, who are smart, and who have bad, bad intentions have gamed these systems. I know you don't like bad Black Mirror, but this is sounding mm, a lot like just a like plot an episode of, of Black Mirror. Black Mirror but it's not a fucking plot of Black Mirror. It's reality. That's the. This is what bothers me about Black Mirror. It's like, what if the internet <laughs> fucked us all up? And it's like, the internet did fuck us all up. Speaking of, here's Ben from Indianapolis. He's ben. still using a Sony Ericsson. Okay, Ben, I want to hear about this. You're using a Sony Ericsson. Please tell right. me what, what model. It's a, it's a Sony Ericsson I know, U10A. Wait, I know. Can you spell that for me? A-I-N-O. A-I-N-O, U10A? U10A. Yeah, it's like I see yeah, I. Kind of U10A. Catchy title. For, or yeah, yeah, I is the international bands, and A is the much rarer, actually works in North America bands. Okay, but, let me check know, this shit out. U10, whatever. A-I-N-O. I'm looking at it. You can buy it right now, $209, Ooh. eBay, $249. I'm into this. It's a it's a vertical slider. It's a it's got a, a touch screen. Hell yeah! It's two forty pixels by four hundred. This is a uh, this Love is a, a touch ca- uh, this is a capac- Oh, it is a capacitive touch screen. Okay. Yeah. Um, two forty um, by four thirty two. Got that beautiful PSP it's interface. Got, it's got GPS, so mm-hmm. it's got Google Maps on it. It does. What the Java own, the the yeah. Java version? It's J two M E. That still works. J2ME. The J two M E version of Google it, Maps still works. It, Indeed. Oh my God. Um, I wrote a Foursquare app to let me check in in Java ME. It was a real, or JTME, or whatever you want to call it. It was a real pain in the butt. <laughs> That's how it. important. That's how important um, checking in on Foursquare was to you. Oh Is yeah. This thing- oh yeah. It's it's the most. Um, it's got Facebook still makes an app that works for it. No. Um, Opera Mini works on it, so you can do tweets. What's the What's the, um, Can you tell me how's the camera? Uh, garbage. 
Why? Why? <laughs> what do you use for music? Spotify? Can you do Spotify on it? Um, no. Uh, I uh, I use Google Music, whatever. But um, you know, how I do you use it on this? Then, how do you use it on this? Uh, yeah, you don't. You you, okay. you put MP3s on it, man. Oh, like you put yeah. MP3s yeah. on it. I'm loving this. Yeah, yeah. What, what you, do you do? Hey, what yeah. do you do for a living? What, what, do you, what is your profession? Uh, I'm a I'm a developer and an analyst for a financial services company. Okay. We. Uh, I was gonna be like, I I would just like to read a column stuff. from you, just life with this phone. <laughs> this is a oh, really okay. good, yeah. a really yeah, good no, narrative. I mean, and so why are you I using mean, this phone? You know, thing is, so so it works. Um, I can drop it and it doesn't break. Mm. Um, I think that some of the, the insightful things you said earlier about how, you know, you want to have a little bit of a distance between um, some of these social platforms and and constantly checking it around your friends or videotaping a concert. Like, I mean, yeah, I could theoretically do all of that, but it's just enough of a pain mm. that I'm not constantly looking at it. This is like putting a you lock know? on your refrigerator. I was just going to say, it's like when people get their mouths wide shut and they're like, I could drink a steak. Right. <laughs> or like you put like a lock with a, you know, a combination or something. And you're like, oh, I got to do the lock. Like, I don't even know if that uh, works, but this is interesting. I, so know, the I, battery li- sorry, go ahead. The battery life is really good. The battery life... Like, I go most of a week before I have to recharge it. Now, trying to a recharge week? it means that I have to find some That's crazy. crazy proprietary USB cable, but, you know. But you, you have, have that like cable. Have but you've got, just to be yeah, clear, do, you, you, you've got your SIM in there, and you're using yeah. this as your daily driver. Yeah, this is my daily driver. Okay, so I've thought about I getting have this. Of, have you seen this phone? It's called the Punked MP01. P U P U N K T. So I've thought mm-hmm. for a long time, I really want this phone. First off, I think it's fucking cool looking, but it is like a candy yeah. bar phone with like this really beautiful streamlined wow. interface. It's so dope looking. It looks like a calculator. And you need to have like a T-Mobile 2G plan. The only network it'll work on in America is like a T-Mobile yeah. old school 2G. It has no, th- no internet. I mean, it has no Wi-Fi. Josh, this doesn't even look like a like daily, like, you know those old planners? No, this is what I want. In. This is what I want. This is what I'm going to use as my phone. But I think it's very much to the to, to Ben, right? To Ben's point. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, it, it's like you can't do the shit. Like, you literally are yeah. just brick-walled from it. Like, you're not going to be able to use the punked MP01. I literally have it in my Amazon cart. I've been, like, hovering over buying this for so long. But it's like $300. Oh, I think that... that- <laughs> So expensive. So then you just spend a thousand dollars on a phone you don't I, I want. I think it's twelve hundred. It's, it's incredible, but the but the deal is, you know, once in a while you do need like the GPS or something like that, and so yeah. you have something yeah. like right. that. Exactly. I'll just I get mean, a, that's the that's a, the I'll thing about a, the uh, I know. It's like leave the iPhone if X I really in the dash. need something. Yeah. Right. You have yeah, GPS yeah. if you need it. Is what you're saying. Yeah. Can you do? Yeah. Can, but if Google Maps. Really tell me about Google Maps. Can you? Tweet, can you do like? Can you do like walking directions in Google Maps? Does it have like new features? Like when's the last time it was updated? Um, I I would have to like I'm gonna look. pull I'm the phone right away now. from me and like try and dig through it. But yeah. uh, JT, I mean, JTM, yeah, I'm I looking think it's right a, now. It's a few years old. It's a few years old, but it still it still works with the same interface. It does driving directions. It does. I think it does walking. I know it does transit. Not very well, but it does it. It shows traffic and stuff on the map. Mm-hmm. And uh, it does. Um, it does street view as well. Yeah. Oh, it but, does street you know, view. See, this this to me sounds yeah. a lot like when people yeah. say that they're going without sugar. Conceptually, yeah. I love that idea. Yeah. I'm never not gonna have sugar. <laughs> it's right. just not gonna happen. Well, it's, po- yeah. it's like it's nope. like it's like cutting carbs out of your diet. It's not gonna happen. I just I it's need to possible. be honest. I can't do it. You could do it. I can't do it. Just you know, drink a lot of diet coke. That's what I've been doing. <laughs> Um, well, Ben, this is super interesting. Thank you for your comments. I think this is like a really fascinating look into a person who's actually living living the dream. Well, is it the dream? Yours, I don't know. What, it's your dream. I don't know what it is. You've got this thing in your cart for three hundred. I, mean, I want. I want something. Perfect, but yeah, I want something else. Like I have this vision of like a a more manicured version of like minimalism. Yeah, like a minim. Like the thing knows when I need to see something and when mm-hmm. I don't, and otherwise it doesn't bother me. Like. Some kind you want of, some kind of assistant to send yeah, you I want a person. Highlights. I want a person. I imagine Jeff Goldblum has a person like this. They yeah. will come in and be like, Jeff, here's a, there's an here's article. You need to know. an article on Twitter about you that you should check out or something. You know, it's like a good one. And then like the rest of the time, I only, I'm thinking about Jeff Goldblum because there's a story about him in GQ about how he has it all. 
which I think is true. Yeah, yeah Anyhow, absolutely. Ben, thank you for this. This is really yeah, a you. super interesting uh, look at the other side. I always sometimes the think other side. minimalism is just another way to show off you have the wealth to yeah, do Minimalism it. is bullshit. So I just want to say, like, I think this whole mili- like this minimal aesthetic, mm-hmm. which, by the way, all the Apple stands are like, it's all about minimal. It's like clean <laughs> yeah. and it's gray clean. and white and web 2.0. It's like, that's old. That's fucking old. Like, yeah. to me, that shit looks like, like, people, whenever, like, I wrote this Apple's bad design because I actually think they really are. Not just the notch, but a lot of other things. But people were like, it says the guy with the squiggly lines on his website. And it's like, you know what? The squiggly lines are so fucking in the future that you don't understand Dope them right hell. now. Like, you're, like, stuck in, like, 2008. That's your problem, You're okay? so 2000 and late. You're 2000 and late. That's exactly. <laughs> but, like, like you look at something like the Dropbox redesign, and people are like, this is disgusting. It's no. Like, no, the Dropbox redesign's fucking cool. It's cool. You just have bad taste. Like, yeah. you just like things that Apple's like, this is the thing that you should like, and Listen, it's the only thing you should like. It's that pendulum, and we're swinging hard into the 70s. It's just like no. It's just like it's just. Let's swing hard into some fucking design. Let's yeah. swing hard into like ideas. Col- like colors. make a choice. It's not. It's design, instead of having the absence of choice. I'm just make saying a that decision. You, you look at you look at these. You look at this this like this idea of minimalism, mm-hmm. and it's like, you know, I'm a guy who loves like mid century furniture, but like there's a point where you're like, all right, enough with the fucking mid century shit. Yeah. Like you know, there's a point everywhere with it's like enough with being minimal, like and everything being clean and clean mm-hmm. lines. Like I don't want to live in, I don't want to live in the. You know, what is the, you know, I'm trying to think of the movie. I don't know. I can't think of a good movie to that is like an example of this, but. Uh, like you don't want to live in a boundless gray. void. Like, no, I don't live. In, yeah, I don't want to live in the set of the fucking end of two thousand one. <laughs> like it looks cool, but like it probably isn't that comfortable. You know, yeah. sometimes well, you just want like a you just want like a soft coat sofa to to, to sit Like on. I said, I ultimately think a lot of minimalism or like or like not owning things or having like no design choices, just as it's in, in as true as possible, is to say like, look how sleek it is. There's nothing offensive. Like it's clean. But then you didn't make any choices. That's right. It's, I'd rather a messy pattern that that's you right. pick. That's right. I think there's a lot of fear in clean and minimal design. I yeah. think there is a lot of like, it's also a lot of like Me Tooism, right? It's like, mm-hmm. it's like, you can't be wrong if it looks like everything else. It, well, right. I would prefer a wallpaper over a white wall any day of the week. All right. Coming up, we wow. have Azim Strong. from Chicago. Powerful. Hi. Wants to know if we think smartphone design has Hello, regressed. Josh. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Hi. What's your, what have you got for us? I just wanted to ask, um, how do you guys think we've regressed from the old phones like my phone, my first uh, smartphone was the Atrix 4G, and they had a replaceable battery and a headphone mm-hmm. jack. Yeah. Well, but how about this? No, how about this? No. How about I'll give you I'll give you one that I find increasingly perplexing. Um, every phone is made out of fucking glass. Every phone shatters. Laura dropped her phone the, the uh, on Friday night, which is actually one of the reasons I ended up buying the iPhone 10. But it the screen completely shattered. Like like she had dropped a fine like crystal, crystal like a fine crystal glass on a concrete floor it was like <laughs> you know anyhow the point is phones are not made to be i mean phones modern phones are not made to be like part of your life they're actually weirdly made to be this like jeweled object that like you need to baby like everybody Even jewelry stands up to like, it why, drops. Make, why make the back of the iphone a beautiful piece of glass <laughs> When literally it's it should a be gar- wood, it's it should a gar- be bamboo. I mean, it could be anything. It could be all sorts of interesting materials. Yeah, but like they make it out Stone. of glass. They make it out of glass, and it's guaranteed to break the second you drop it. It's yeah. failed every drop and it lo- test. It, do- it never even looks good. It gets dirty right. and smudged there, up no matter what they there, do. There's no version of that that you can drop. There's no. just nowhere you can drop it. Like it's going yeah. to get cracked no matter what. It's going to get completely ruined. And you're gonna have to go back to Apple now. I, probably it makes them a lot of money. I'm guessing yeah. they make a lot of money from that. I will say the nice thing about the Pixel Two, the the the, the two and the two XL, the back is metal. I have dropped this. It's got a little bit of glass on it. Like I'm not as scared about this breaking. Like it actually mm-hmm. can take a fall. But but so I'll say that's one way we regress. I don't think replaceable battery is the issue to me. I think the issue is that battery tech. Like if you it's look at so the specs, bad. if you look at the te- the, the specs for the iPhone 10, it's they're like battery. they're like it gets longer, it gets two hours more battery life than the iPhone 7. It's like well, but the iPhone 8 Plus gets way more battery life than that. It's like why don't you make it like figure out some way? If you made the few millimeters thicker, thicker. but it got like 24 hours why of is battery, it so thin. Who's like, chasing thinness? At like this who point? fucking cares how thin it is? I care if I can actually use the thing for an extended period of time, or if I have to worry every time. Yeah, I mean here here's a feeling. What is this? I mean. Tell me if you've experienced this. You are using okay. your GPS in your car, and you start to get nervous about your battery life because it's like it drains the battery. So all GPS, screen on, GPS running, battery killer, right? It's like make a fucking phone yeah. that doesn't do that. Like that's yeah. a place where now a replaceable battery can help you a little bit in that situation, but it's more like 
you want the battery tech to be better, right? Yeah. And it just has not. I don't think yeah. it's really progressed that much. No. Um, you know, I, I think that I think a lot. They've look. Phones have come a long way. I mean, the new Android and the new iOS are unbelievably capable at doing so many things. I mean, it's pretty crazy, actually, what you can do with a phone. It's a magic wand. It really is. I mean, it's the most. It's the most incredible piece of technology that ever. That, that maybe not ever, but it is. It I mean, is fire the wheel. It is for many generations the most Instagram. sort of incredible piece of technology, right? Even the most basic version of it. But I do think, um, I do think that that I don't know if there's been a regression like headphone jacks. Like I think the argument here is like the headphone jack's been around for a long time, and eventually it'll be gone. I've never felt. I think it's ridiculous the way they rolled out the headphone jack changes. That's the way that, that bothers me, is the way that they did it. And the, the dongle stuff, it's just so tone deaf. Yeah. <laughs> I, feel like you, if, I feel like if you include the AirPods, <laughs> you're like, you make a phone without a headphone jack and include the AirPods. Sure. So like, that's a good idea. Sure, yeah. But they didn't do that. And they could have. I mean, what are those AirPods assembly cost? 30 bucks? If not that, even that, I, I forget they're using I would, slave labor. So. I mean, I would, I would imagine to make a set of AirPods, it probably costs yeah. them two bucks or something, three Just bucks. Throw them in. Yeah. Hundred. What are they? One hundred sixty dollars for a pair of those? Uh, oh, John thinks it's more. Oh, maybe it's six. I'm sorry, Tim Cook over here, assembly factory genius. <laughs> Anyhow. I mean, they are the most profitable company in the world. I just want to. Rem- I want you to. Yeah. To remember I mean, that. it's not like they don't have the cash to burn. Well, let me ask. How, how do you think phones have regressed? I mean, you mentioned the battery, and and I think you said headphone. What else? What else do you think is worse now? Well, I do agree with the glass back. Like all, all of my phones, all of my smartphones have been made of plastic. I have the next bit Robin right now. Oh, what do you think but, of that? Do you, do you use that as your daily driver? Yeah. You like it? The battery is starting to. The battery's worn out now, but yeah. I, that's, I like how it has the unlockable bootloader so I can install lineage on it. This is a serious, now we're so in serious think, nerd shit right yeah. here. Yeah. But I agree. Yeah, I mean, you want but, the phones to be open. I mean, you want them to be able to, you want to be able to fuck with them. I mean, I love the, I, is the way, there merit to the modular phone idea? I, I mean, I, I like, I the like. The modular phone idea, that, I don't, I don't think that's possible because the ARM architecture doesn't have, like, a BIOS, right? Yeah. So, basically, you need an Intel x86 processor, which is never going to happen. But if it, if it could. Agree. Agree. If there Agree. was a Never going to happen. If there was a solve. Yeah, I mean, the idea is right, but is it? I don't know. It's like, yeah. I just feel like you'd wait and buy all the best parts, unless yeah, you're but, a mom. But the thing about these... Sorry, the thing about But the, same, the thing about... I meant my mom. ...phone design is... The systems are so tightly integrated. Yeah. Like every generation that you see these, you know, we see the leaps and bounds is in the actual, like the design of the entire system. It's like, you know, the, the way that I, it's hard to imagine that you could just snap on in two years, you could snap on a better camera, camera and suddenly you yeah. have a better camera because it's not just the camera. It's the, it's the way yeah, it's processed. It's the bridge, yeah. you know, it's like all of this stuff. And so like, I agree. I do agree. I think it would be hard to do. Mm. Um, but you know, I think like I like that the Robin's made of plastic, right? The next bit, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you ever dropped it? A lot. Do you have a case on it? I I've got no. I do, I like to keep my phones naked. Is the front also plastic or is it glass? Well, this the front's plastic. Hmm. Besides the screen. Interesting. Yeah. Right. But, well, you break the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, yeah. I think I, th- I think you're I think you're right that there has been some regression, but I, I I think it's more like there hasn't been innovation in the right places. To me, I I would like to see somebody make a phone that is like le- like legitimately durable. The idea, I mean, I can't tell you how many times my phone is just how disgusting is an OtterBox? Oh my God, they're so bad. It's the bad. It's the and worst thing yeah. I've ever seen in my life. I mean, I mean, it destroys the design of the phone. It's a giant eraser, and I I just feel like I just feel like the thing is I for every for every. Device I own, I have a case. This is actually the first one I felt a little bit comfortable without having a mm-hmm. case for, because the back is mostly metal. But I know the sc- the screen could like crack so easily. I mean, it does freak me the fuck out. It's like I don't want this to break. I know you hate it, but when I play my Switch on the subway, all I can think is like, don't ever drop this. Don't ever drop this. It will shatter into a million right, pieces. Right. Imagine the but imagine the iPhone 10. It's so expensive, and it is a, so fragile. Oh, I mean, it is so it's a fragile. Baby. Like, a baby phone and a baby phone. I saw somebody who tweeted, they're like, well, that didn't last long. It was like a few minutes after it was released, and it's like their phone was shattered. And oh. it's like, yeah, that's what happens. Anyhow, thank you, for the, thank you for the call. That was, you know, an interesting, I think. Okay, an interesting, bye. 
Appreciate it. Bye. An interesting way to think about this stuff is is like, have we actually gone back on some things? I mean, yeah. I think it's interesting. Like the note has a stylus. And yeah. I feel like there was this idea that the stylus would never work for phones again. Like it was like dead with the trio. And I actually think it's kind of cool. Like there are places where it's useful. I was thinking um, earlier this week about VR and um, how they, it was attempted in the 90s by like Sega and it was so bad. And then it came back and we were like, it's going to work this yeah. time. And, and now, now it's, it's dead, like, it's, it's kind of shitty. <laughs> I feel like, no, I feel like VR is, is we have we have not yet gotten to the place where it needs to be. It's still yeah. reliant on things that most people don't, aren't going to spend time with no. and don't want to fuck around with, like PC rigs. Yeah, you know, if 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 the palm if the palm pre had come with AR technology, maybe we'd still be using been, it today. This could have been it. Pokemon Go. Anyhow, I think palm. we have to wrap soon. Are there yeah. any callers that we have neglected here? Um, I don't think so. Should but if anyone some... would like to, in the chat or elsewhere, pop up with a. Uh, Suggestion for yeah. next week's show. Yeah, if anybody has don't know what we're doing, yet. so we don't know what we're doing for next week's show. I mean, I we feel never like, do. I feel like I'm going to end up in the, doing the Fast and Furious thing because I've been talking about it for so fucking long. I would really like to do that. I don't know, but um, but uh, you know, I want. I mean, I'm trying to think if there's anything. I mean, maybe, maybe I should get the punked. And review. We can't do two I can't phones. Do I'm not gonna right do that. Right do. I might just get I'm it. Sorry. Anyhow. No, I've I've like I'm supposed to be on like a moratorium of like technology buying. Like I'm supposed to be very like Laura and I have talked about self control. Yeah, and I have no self control no. whatsoever, and it's really bad. And I did not need to buy that iPhone. And I I keep there was only like a twelve step session. I keep thinking about taking it back. I know someone you could give it to. <laughs> I'm not giving it to anybody. I'd sell it. I would be consider selling it. Hmm. Hmm. We'll like, circle back to this next week. It's also like they're gonna be everywhere. You can get one now. Yeah, you could go get one. I went and got one. I didn't order it. I didn't wait till three in the morning. Guess what? I got one on Saturday morning. I didn't fucking wait to stay up at night till three a.m. and show everybody this is my no mini SNES. I'm sorry. Like you could go buy one. Apple makes these phones for people to buy. They sell them at the stores. I've done this for several Apple phones. It's like Michael wants you to ride the subway for a week. Who? Michael? Who? In chat. Um. I would be open to that. Hmm. I mean, the subways in New York have been a fucking disaster. Exactly. I would, like, like, I would like to do it just to I, hear you complain. No, honestly, like people are like, you, I can't believe, because I drive for my commute, and they're like, I can't believe you drive, and it's like, well, you were trapped on the subway for six hours the other day. and I literally was on waiting for the J train for 40 minutes, and a woman next to me was crying the whole time, and I was like, this is the bad place. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> yeah, something we got to get. I mean, I would, I would do it. I would do it for a week. Okay. We'll do a poll. Maybe. We're going to we'll put do a, a poll. poll. We're going to throw We're going to really up. put a poll Tweet up. at us your ideas. Please tweet yeah, yeah. at us ideas. It, it could be Ryan any, it could be anything. The one thing that I've been interested in doing is, um, oh, wait, someone's, oh, on someone's the phone got, Wait, I, someone's got an idea. Who is it? What is their name? Uh, Lucien from Switzerland. Lucien, you're on the phone all the way from Switzerland. Please tell us what you want us Let's to do. Let's hear about this. Hey, hello, Josh. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, already sorry for my accent because obviously I'm from Switzerland. So I love it's beautiful. It's, it's, so, it's so much better than our my I wish dirty Long Island. Accent. I wish I wish all Americans sounded like this. <laughs> yeah, I wish I wish I did. All right, what's your idea? I appreciate. It. I appreciate. It. So yeah, my idea is that I, I understand that you couldn't go through the with the palm tree um, challenge because it was too dangerous for your security and children and stuff like that. So wh why not? Um, trying to do it with a computer, which is not you know as mainly important for like quick. Quick sending message and quick calls. An iBook. And try to use what? an old computer that's still capable. Yeah. Like, like what? Like what? What kind of computer? What version of software are we talking I mean, about? Why not? Why, well, Wind let's say something about Apple like iBook? Windows, like, Windows, Windows 95? XP or, yeah. Well, maybe, <laughs> let's not go to, but maybe 95. Yeah, sure. Why not? Why not? I'm so or down. XP, if it's too, too dangerous for it. Windows 95. Uh, I'm play Minesweeper. Can you get Chrome from Windows 95? Yeah, yeah. I mean, a, I'm not sure. Yeah. But I, I, you, you can get on the internet with Internet Explorer, can't you? Okay. All right, hold on. Chrome, Windows 95. I'm just Googling it right now. Here we go. Yeah, how to run Windows 95 on Google Chrome. No, that's the opposite. It's like you can run Windows 95 <laughs> in Chrome. Hmm. Um, all right, we'll figure it out. Listen, yeah. Lucien, this is this a is really... There's a good suggestion. It's a very good Listen, suggestion. it's going in the tank. We're going to put it in the poll. Never change your okay, accent, sure, Lucien. Sure. And, and keep keep uh, keep that accent. Don't about. try to fix that at all. No, Because that's perfect. perfect. You're perfect uh, just the way you are. So some other people in chat want us to microdose, which I'm so down so, for. On, on LSD? Yeah. I mean... It doesn't you know, ruin the day. It's weird. Microdosing. It's weird. I've been hearing about LSD a lot lately. I was just talking to somebody who was t telling me that they did acid. they say it fixes depression. They did acid. I'm not depressed, but I... Look, I did a lot of acid in, when I was a kid. 
uh, not a little kid, but you know, a teenager. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like no. I feel like if there is any drug I was going to do again, that would be on the kind of last of the on the list. Huh. That'd be the last That's thing. That's the top of my haven't done yet things. Yeah. That like jump what out of a the, plane. Oh, you haven't ever done it. Mm-mm, jump what out drugs, of a plane. What drugs have you meet done? Gwyneth Paltrow. What drugs have you done? Um, mushrooms. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously weed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, Molly, a uh-huh. lot of Adderall. I haven't done Molly, but I did a ton of ecstasy. What's the difference? Nothing. Really? It's just okay. a new name. It's just a new name. It's okay. like P. Diddy. It's just Adderall. rebranding to love or whatever. Adderall's great. Adderall's, Adderall's great. Adderall. Yeah, what and else? then other things that, you know, doesn't need to be on the internet, but that I've that dabbled like in. What? Like, I know other like, stuff. You just tell me something. Other stuff. You like, know, what, like go-go juice. Like, what is <laughs> go-go juice? You know? Is that, like, <laughs> is that a thing? Go-go juice? Um, go-go juice is um, uh, honey boo-boo. They would put pixie sticks in a Red Bull and then feed it to children and that's all that goes that's juice. fucked up yeah. that's child abuse and you shouldn't do no, that i did the adult version of that uh, other people wait other know, people want us to do sneaker is. culture other people want us to I do got a we new got pair ideas here I got scientology a new pair of sneakers you want to see them they're i'm i'm wearing them right oh now. this is so cool what these are very cool this is my new shoe i don't know if you can see Hold on, this is like it. a goofy movie but as a shoe well wow, that's fucking rude okay this no, is, it's good. Let me describe the shoe to you. It's, it's a, so cool. It's a Nike. Oh, I'll tell you what the model is. Actually, I don't know. It's like a Pegasus. It's like a modern. I'm, actually, hold on. Is it in here? I'm being very earnest that I love these. Uh, I So I saw these and I was like, wait, are these disgusting or are they awesome? No, they're awesome. It's a, it's a Pegasus. It's some kind of new Pegasus. Anyhow. and um, Very Memphis design. Pegasus AT. Um, yeah. I think I actually had a pair of, of Nikes that were this color in like the 80s mm-hmm. or in the early 90s, and which is why I maybe was attracted to them. Yeah. I, I mean, want I, them. But uh, I bought them. I showed them to people in our Slack, and I was like, am I crazy or are these good? Cool. And Leah Finnegan, who I get all my fashion advice from, uh, author of Leah Letter and one of our great editors here, Leah was like, those are awesome. And I was like, well, if Leah likes them, I was like, are you trolling right. me? I was like, are you trolling me? She's like, no, she knows, these are awesome. She knows. And so, and so I got them. And I have to say, I fucking love them. Yeah. They're very comfortable. And these also, they look cool. What are you wearing? $9 at Walmart. Those are great. <laughs> I bought it. Whenever, I, bought whenever it. I go to a Walmart, I find whatever is shockingly cheap. Like, clearly, like, human rights abuses brought the price down, and I buy all of it. You're like, you're like, let me get that. I actually <laughs> bought a pair of shoes. Um, uh, uh, Target has this new line called Goodfellow and Co. or something. It's like their, me- it's like their fancy like, uh, you know, millennial man men's like men's mm-hmm. line. But they had a pair of like Common Projects. I don't know if you know the Common Project shoes. They're like white sneakers. Yeah. Like oh, they're very expensive. They're like four hundred dollars. They have like a Common Project like a knock. knockoff, and it's like. Twenty three ninety nine. I was like, <laughs> I'm gonna buy these, and they're fucking great shoes. Actually, <laughs> they're they're cheap. They're easy to clean. They're pleather, and so any no animals, white shoe no animals needs to die. be easy to they, replace. They look like leather. They feel not like leather, um, and they're they're cheap. Uh, and they th- definitely were made by some kind of horrible labor that I f- <laughs> I'm g- feeling feeling guilty about. But what do you know? Yeah, some kind of you know Kathy Lee situation. But hey, you know Trump said he's going to fix all this stuff. I don't know. I'm still waiting. Someone suggested um, because you know Zelda played with the pixie. Maybe you play Zelda with Zelda for a week, which I don't know how I would get involved in. But so Zelda is actually getting an elf costume for something they're doing at school for the holidays. Oh. But we were looking for elf costumes, and and Laura found a Zelda costume, oh. which is basically an elf yeah. costume. You know. Um, there are all the knockoff Zelda costumes Zelda in Halloween always say like Woodland not, Elf. Zelda is not she's video three, elf. She's three and a half years old. Three and a half year olds really don't play video games, and if they do, I think there's something wrong. Yeah. Like, like they're being tricked into buying in app purchases. She will watch some stuff on her on her iPad, which she calls iComputer, which is amazing. <laughs> That's her name for it, and she really likes it. And that's another thing that I find like I get very scared of. Like she mm-hmm. fucking loves watching her iComputer. I mean, I bought her a new one, so I guess I'm, it's my fault for encouraging it. But someone in the chat called yeah. my shoes ugly, um, and okay. then I bought well, cheap rude. shoes. Well, you know what? Then pay me. You more know what? You're ugly. In the chat. And your shoes are cheap. Do you pay? Do you pay me, person in the chat? Not yet. Uh. Um, someone wants you to get all your news from just local media. Like you know, local. Well, that's like the See, New, York like New York Times. I live in New York. Even New York, York pro- One. New York One's great. a great network. I'll do that. New York yeah. One, New York Times, Sounds the great. New Yorker, New York Magazine. But maybe you got pushed into you know <laughs> News no. Twelve or something. I mean, what you want me to watch? ABC, the local ABC station, affiliate. the affiliate. I mean, look, local news is very important. Local news is great. I was having this conversation over the weekend. No, local them. local news, you're going to see the resurgence of, you're already starting yep. to see the strains of it. Local news is very important because they get stories that other people don't see for a long time. Yeah. Someone wants you to play, this is a story, someone wants Josh to play soccer and for me to vlog it. Um, I would love to just tape you play soccer. I think, 
I mean, just once, like, or professionally. I think, you want I me, think like, a join couple a practice league? sessions. I don't know. I don't like moving my body very much. Yeah. I'm not a big fan. That's of why exercise. I was like taping things. I can do that. <laughs> I mean, I would be, I would be open to it. Yeah. All right. Let's. We're gonna throw up a poll. Okay. Great. We're gonna throw up a. Got poll. a lot of good ideas here. Go to at Josh Topolsky, Joshua Topolsky. Yeah. At Ryan Hulahan. At Joshua Topolsky. Yeah, at Ryan Hulahan. Poll because I'm not making my at, own poll. Outline at no tomorrow doesn't have one. I never did it. No, you shouldn't. You keep the brand. That's my brand. I am the captain now. Mm. Okay. Well. Well, thank you everybody for tuning in. Yeah. Sorry. I was just. I just got directed to some links to buy some phones that are like. I always say Josh is great at one at many things, but the one thing I think you're the best at is comparison shopping online. You get into the deep specs. I'm. F- I can shop. You're so good at shopping. I'm it's good at, crazy. Well, I'm good at googling, which is a natural. <laughs> a lot uh, of review companion. comparisons. Yeah, I'm anyway. good, really good at shopping. Um, anyhow. So that's our show, I guess. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching and listening. Oh, we're just going to cue up the music just right there Mm. in the background. Um, We'll be back in two weeks with more of this. We'll have done some type of experiment in in that time. Uh, Go to that platform we keep telling you not to go to and vote. When we can find a better place to do vote, to do votey, we'll do it. But it's on Twitter now. Uh, We'll probably be able to introduce a poll tool. uh, Poll. Poll. TBH. Tool for the outline. Yeah. And that's what we'll do it on. Um, Anyhow. But uh, thank you for listening and watching, Bye. and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you soon. And, and as always, I wish you and your family the very best, though. I've just learned that your entire family is using the punked MPO1, and they don't have access to the T-Mobile 2G <laughs> network. <laughs>